All right, so let's look at this one a little bit differently. We want to solve for x. Um, well, some of us may look at this one and want to uh, break this up as the sum of two perfect squares. The, the problem with that is that now you've got uh, x plus 6i and x minus 6i. So that's, that's not really what we're looking for in this because it gives us an imaginary number actual values of x just by doing the same thing we just did on that last problem so we would subtract 36 from both sides of the equal sign <clears throat> now I have x squared well I, mean, I, I take that back it kind of it kind of does work we got a negative 36 equals x squared Are we good there well from this point I would just square root both sides So I have uh, x now equals the square root of negative 36, but also x equals the negative square root of negative 36. Right, this is coming from the absolute value stuff. So, um, at this point I would recommend taking out the negative from the inside of that radical. So I would make this i times the square root of 36. But not everyone needs this step, by the way. And then this one is negative i times the square root of 36. And, and this is why not everyone needs this. Is Some of you guys know that 36 is a perfect square. The square root of 36 is just 6. So I guess I could just write that as a 6i. And then this one would be a negative 6i. Which, I guess, is kind of what we were looking at before with that uh, x plus 6i and x minus 6i. <clears throat> so we need these to equal 0. It, it just won't always be a perfect square on those, okay? So, yeah, we, we would circle these as our answer.